I have not seen that ever before. Wow. Fortunately, this is kind of a, a paperweight, an expensive paperweight. Maybe I'll make a urinal out of it in my barn and pee into the cylinders. Come here, buddy. What's up, Innie? He's a little, oh, he's coming outside. He's a little afraid of the outside right now. Come here, buddy. Yeah, you're a little skittish, aren't you? It's okay. You'll get used to it. Hopefully this guy grows up to be a good barn cat. All right, come on back inside, bud. You have to chill out in here, okay? Watch out. What's going on, guys? We're gonna start digging into this red STR. We're gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna pull the motor. The motor's gotta come out regardless because it's got a blown head gasket. And I already have some people interested in a bunch of the mods. So I'm gonna pull the motor out. So let's fire this guy up, get it in the barn. Hopefully get the motor out today. Yeah, should be pretty, fairly easy. It's heavily modded, but it is an ETS rotated kit, which is pretty easy to take apart. A lot of nice parts, so they should hopefully come apart easily. This car actually looks pretty good. I'm so on the fence about some of these cars, parting them out. I'm gonna explain a little bit why I might part something out like this versus fixing it. What it really comes down to is ultimately, I buy these and sell parts and fix and sell them to make money. That's how I make a living. So do I enjoy them? Yes, I have some myself that are personal cars that I really enjoy driving, I enjoy modifying, but for the most part, I do this to make money. and. A car like this, the bumper's cut for a front mount. It's super heavily modified. Obviously the car is wrapped, which I don't know the condition of the paint underneath. It doesn't have the factory STI seats. The battery is relocated back here to the trunk. Uh, everything's gutted back here. Um, the, the stock hanger is modified for a Walbro 450. Obviously there's no trunk except this carbon one, which I could sell it with it. But with all those things, some of them are not irreversible, but it would cost me a lot of money to pull this thing apart, bring it closer to stock so it can run a stock motor, it doesn't need a built motor because I could fix this motor too, but it's still a stock motor. It still is a high chance that this motor is gonna let go and I don't wanna sell something to somebody that they're gonna do you know, 10 pulls and it's gonna let go. I, I don't want that. So it's really difficult for me to wrap my head around selling a built Subaru. I know some people enjoy them, but they are expensive to maintain and you have to know what you're getting into. They're also very difficult to sell just because I think a lot of people understand that they are, you know, not always a ticking time bomb, but sometimes, a lot of times they are, especially like something like this that was, you know, making 450 wheel um, on a pretty big turbo and it is a stock long block. So it's kind of, you know, this one was definitely a ticking time bomb, but if I were to try and get this thing, drop a stock motor in it, I'd have to find a stock turbo, which I do have, but I'd have to get a stock intercooler. Then the front bumper looks like it's cut for a front mount. It doesn't make a ton of sense for me to fix and sell one like this. It doesn't mean I'm going to strip the chassis. Currently what I'm doing is I'm going to pull the motor. I'm going to pull a lot of the mods because if I'm going to fix it, I wouldn't be using those mods anyways. I'm going to sell those. And then I'm going to probably try and sell the chassis whole. If there's somebody who wants to pick it up and drop a motor in it, it'd be a great car. It doesn't have very many miles for the year and it doesn't seem to have any rust really. We'll see when I get it up on the lift, but that's kind of my thought process of why I don't just fix all of these. Same with my white car. There was a lot of things that were essentially irreversible or would cost a lot of money to reverse to make it close to stock, look nice, drive nice. And it's just, doesn't make sense for me to do that it would make more sense for me to sell it whole like this the drive lines pulled out of it and everything the motors pulled out of it and i'm trying to sell it like this so that somebody if they want to can buy it and drop a motor put a drive line in it they've got a nice car that they can drive this car however doesn't have a front mount it doesn't have a big fuel system it still has some stock fuel lines so it's reversible pretty easily reversible i can pull the wrap off i know it's clean underneath i have pictures of it without the wrap on it hopefully you guys understand that not too many of you come after me 
uh, for parting them out. But I, I think I'm also not super unreasonable with what I part out either. So yeah, that's that's my thought process. Let's get this up on the lift. I'm gonna have to put it up on some two by fours because I think the lift, oh, may, we might be able to get it under there. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna start tearing apart. I'm gonna get some videos of the motor running. The motor does sound good. It's got good oil pressure. So maybe somebody wants a short block. Maybe I'll use the short block. Depends on if there's any rust in the cylinders or anything like that from coolant because there's obviously coolant uh, I'm getting into the cylinders. So let's take a peek at this thing. First order of business is I am going to do a compression and leak down test. I might just do a leak down test because we know the head gasket's blown and blown pretty bad, so I don't think it's going to pass a compression test. But a leak down test will verify that we're actually getting leaked down out the head gasket and we're not getting leaked down through the crankcase or leaked down out the valves, uh, something of that sort. Because if this short block, if the cylinder walls look fine and there's no leak down to the crankcase, I could potentially use this short block for a personal project. Uh, I could sell it. I don't really like selling. Uh, use short blocks like this um, or I could put it in the car that I'm going to fix and sell so I'm gonna uh, Yeah, do that and that will hopefully help us decipher Whether it's a healthy motor or not easy access on this side because the battery is relocated and then I'm gonna be taking this part anyway, so I'll just take off this and this charge pipe right here and we'll have easy access to this other side So I've got the radiator cap off right here. I've got the oil cap off and I'm gonna be listening out this and the exhaust and the, the most proper way to get to top dead center is basically take the timing covers off and look at the timing marks. It will tell you on like service manuals when the piston is at top dead center on each cylinder. But I am just going to take a metal punch essentially and put it down on top of the piston, rotate it over by hand until it comes, until the rod is the farthest out. That's going to be my top dead center right there. Top dead center, take our leak down tester, screw it on in here. These plugs looked wet compared to the other ones so i kind of think this might be the side that popped the head gasket oh yeah a lot of leak down air compressor is probably going to come on but we've got about 85 percent leak down out of the radiator just like i thought i hear pretty much nothing out of the crankcase let's see if i can get this on camera let's i don't this mic might pick it up which means we are pushing past the head gasket, getting into the cooling system, and it's pressurizing out of the radiator, which makes sense with a blown head gasket, especially that we're spraying coolant out of the exhaust. So it's pretty, it's definitely a bad blown head gasket. Let's move on to the next cylinder. Uh, the other cylinders seem to be pretty good. So I'm hoping, I got one more cylinder to do, cylinder four, but I'm hoping it's just that cylinder that has the problem. And maybe this short block is okay to use. I don't know, it's got really good oil pressure. I'll have to see how the cylinders look and everything when I get it apart, but it could be a good uh, cheap short block for myself or something to chuck in a car. So one more cylinder. And then after that, we're going to be on to tearing it down. All right. Almost no leak down, like 2% leak down, which is really good. After the leak down test was done, it was time to start taking apart the car. I kind of started with the turbo kit, taking that off. Thankfully the ETS rotated kits are really friendly and easy to work on. My leak down test proved to be true. These are both dry. That one's all wet. So cylinder number one. So same with on the header. You can see exactly where which cylinder has the coolant coming out of it. So that one's dry. Those two are dry. And cylinder one is the one that's wet and has coolant coming out of it. So when we pull the heads off, we should be able to see somewhere in this cylinder that it blew the gasket. I time lapsed past all this stuff because it's just taking apart another Subaru. They're all pretty similar. This one, like I said, I'm pulling apart all the mods, so I took the front bumper off, got the nice front mount intercooler off also. All right, I don't got too much left to go. Uh, just some basic things. We're going to get this motor out of here. It's a big mess out here. Got the turbo kit off, the front mount kit, and our little buddy's joining us out here today. Hey, buddy. What's up, Innie? No. So he's a little skittish, especially with this garage door open. He's pretty, uh, pretty nervous, but I brought his box and food and water out here just to make him feel a little bit more at home. And yeah, we're just going to slowly get him more and more comfortable to being out here. And then he's outside. He's really freaked out. His heart starts beating like crazy. You know, it's a big world out there. All right, let's get back to this. It's just going to be time lapse me pulling this out. And then I'd love to get the TGV's fuel system off 
and I'd love to get the heads off and everything today. Out comes the motor on the coolant sprayer, and onto the engine stand it goes. There she is, no motor. I wondered why this looked weird over here, and it's because the fuse panel's not there. They must have it tucked into the fender there. But my next steps, I'm gonna get the intake off, the injectors out of here, the fuel rails, the TGV deletes, and those are going over with the rest of these parts, and I'm gonna put up a listing today. A few videos ago, we introduced Innie, our new barn cat. We introduced him to the channel. So he is going to be one of the barn cats. And we were supposed to get his sister, but ended up not working out. We got another cat though, a girl we wanted a female. Hey, Red. So we think her name's gonna be Red. She's definitely bigger than Innie is. Um, she's, I think, almost a month older. She's also shy and a little skittish, but she's warming up already. But I believe females tend to be better hunters. And so we wanted another female because that's really why we get these barn cats is so that they kill mice, chipmunks, things like that. So those will be the new cats that will be in my videos. And then in the spring, summer, when I officially move into my house, which you probably will have seen that uh, house purchasing video by now, when I officially move in there, me and Jade, my fiance, are going to get our own kittens for our house. So then we'll have some more kittens on the channel. But right now we gotta tear down this motor, tear it down, see what it looks like. Six star head gasket. This one looks pretty good though. I'm curious to see what the other one looks like. I don't see anything passing through into the cooling system, anything like that. Oh, she is toast. Oh, did it smoke the head too? Man. Unfortunately, I cannot get my microphone to work, so I'm just gonna have to talk a little extra loud, and I'm apologizing for the audio. This short block is toast. Look at that. I have not seen that ever before. Wow. I mean, it's done. It like it melted the the block here. That is crazy. The uh, the cylinder wall. I mean, that's like a quarter inch deep hole. Done for. Toast. That's kind of a bummer. I was maybe going to use this short block for a personal project, but not a chance anymore. And there's nothing special about the internals or anything. It's not like they're nice built internals or just stock. So fortunately, this is kind of a, a paperweight, an expensive paperweight. Maybe I'll make a urinal out of it in my barn and pee into the cylinders. There, now you can see it a little bit better. I'm trying to show you the depth of it. Yeah, that's pretty violent. I'm hoping this cylinder head is savable. I'm gonna have to talk to the machine shop. You can see that right there. I don't know if it's too deep, but we're gonna find out. I'd love to be able to save these cylinder heads. That is gonna wrap up this video. Yeah, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed, please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, whatever, whatever you feel willing to do to help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys are getting your projects done. I will see you guys in the next video.